Hey traders, how you doing? This is Greg McLeod from the Forex Cash Machine and the Elite Traders University with this edition of the Bears versus Bulls, the weekly Forex forecast. And we got an exciting uh, program, gonna, gonna uh, outlay what's going on in the markets this week. Of course, we have the volatility uh, generated from the Russian invasion of Ukraine, but there's also other announcements and other things going on on the economic calendar, which can impact trading. Okay, we have uh, retail sales, RB, uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia is gonna have some minutes released. We have GDP coming out as well uh, from, uh, from the Eurozone. And we also have uh, GDP out of Japan, as well as uh, some consumer inflation expectations, some other big things. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we can go ahead and get started with bulls, bears versus bulls, our weekly Forex forecast. So let me go ahead and share the screen and I'll share screen number three. And it's good to be with you again. My name is Greg McLeod, and it's so good to be with you here on this uh, wonderful, uh, this is actually Saturday, almost Sunday. And, um, you know, always want to get a jump on the um, economic calendar. What, the, uh, what traders fail to realize that the markets are intertwined, that they can't just look at the market or look at price action. They have to really look at that the whole world is interconnected now. And there's different events that happen around the world, different announcements and things that can create a lot of volatility, create a lot of risks, but also trading opportunities as well. So let's get right to it. Okay, let's uh, go. Oh, that's not, that's not gonna happen. Uh, now you know I do, I'm, I'm not trading. I'm uh, I'll, trading uh, in the markets, okay. And maximize okay let's get it going here okay so we're going to use my market heat map and i don't know where my other my market heat map disappeared too but my market heat map is an all-purpose tool it's not just a currency scanner that tells me what's moving and shaking in the market but it's also <clears throat> a uh, a complete uh suite of tools that can help us in our trading uh, everything from uh forex to calendars to sentiment indexes and volatility and uh, a number of other things that including courses that teach you how to trade as well they can try it free for 30 days and if you like it it's just 19.99 a month um and uh, and you also get a little sample of it there but right now the markets are closed so we don't uh you know everything is great okay because it's uh, no, the uh the de trading desks are closed really the forex market is 24 hours a day seven days a week but you only can trade it when the desks are open and so the desks are recording, no activity right now, okay? And you can also come to the website and you can find out more about my market heat map. And it's why my, my traders, myself, we use this all the time, okay? So let's get right to it. One of the tools is the financial calendar. And we got the all set up for this week, uh, starting the week of uh, Monday, March 7, 2022. Um, some... Well, I like looking at the high impact items, not not the medium ones, because that's more bang for the buck. If you saw me trade the ECB rate announcement, that was a high impact item and it was good for uh, you know over two hundred pips. But um, but that's still no, another week. We start a new week. Uh, we'll do some live trading this week as well. Check out our Facebook group. You want to head over to the Facebook group, and uh, you want to go over to the Forex Cash Machine. That's four X with a number four cash machine you can also go to the forexcashmachine.com and become a member that way you won't miss what's going on with my live trading will be done in the in my private facebook group and also uh tips and tricks and uh and analysis and uh, uplifting quotes and news and things like that can really help you in your trading um you know, share your trades and things like that as long as you're not selling anything i'm gonna throw you out if you do <laughs> But if you want to be part of a, community, a growing community and actually sharpen your trading and become a great professional, then join my group, uh, the, the Forex Cash Machine, uh, Forex Cash Machine uh, group, private group, and um, we'll see you there. All right, let's go ahead and get right to it. Economic calendar, high impact items. Aussie dollar is going to be in play on on Tuesday, as uh, Monday seems to be going to be a light week. Now, usually on Mondays, if you don't have news at first part of the week that uh, currencies will still trade, but they'll be range bound. There won't be a lot of news to be able to drive them into trends. So uh, so we can look at trading support and resistance levels. And actually it's pretty good for scalping too, especially on the smaller 
one minute, five minute and tick charts like I normally do. However, on Tuesday, we might get some big breakout moves because we have the RBA governor low speech, high impact item. That's gonna be at uh, 1750s so about, oh, I don't know, 5 p.m. That might not be too, too impactful. I always find anything around 5 p.m. Eastern time is gonna be kind of, kind of strange. Now, also remember that we're gonna be springing ahead or yeah, springing ahead, losing an hour. So um, all of the clocks will move for daylight savings time soon okay uh we're gonna have uh, gross must uh, gdp out of a uh, quarter on quarter q q o q o q is that quark but it's, it's quarter on quarter and it's um basically measures the economic activity of japan especially it's, it's expected to, to rise from 1.3 percent to 1.4 percent uh which could be uh bullish for the japanese yen however uh from my observation i've been doing this for 25 years I don't see positive or negative Japanese data impacting the currency. They are constantly in a state of weakening their currency in order to make their products and goods much cheaper. The Lexuses and Playstations and other things that they make um, are benefit from a weaker yen. So um, that they're a whole different party. Okay, so let's move right into Thursday. Um, now we have the, oh, we just have that. This is next week. Hello, Greg. Okay, RBA meetings may, okay, now that's a high impact one. That's a high impact one. Monday, March 14th. I'm sorry about that. Scratch that. I'll probably wind up uh, cutting that part of the broadcast. But um, anyway, now you know it's live for sure, right? March 14th, RBA meetings announcement. Uh, Australia uh, that's going to impact the, the Australian dollar. 19.30, that's about 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Look for the Australian dollar, Aussie yen, Aussie CAD, Aussie Swiss to all be in play. And that'll probably be a really good scalping opportunity. So check out my Facebook group and uh, join in into the scalping party, the Scalp Pipalusa. Okay. Tuesday, March 15th, 2022, we have a bunch of UK uh, announcements at 2 a.m. Average earnings. Um, including bonus three months uh, for the year, uh, uh, should rise from 4.3 to 4.9. That could be bullish for the British pound. We also have the IL ILO unemployment rate uh, for three months, and that's going to uh, expect it to fall from 4.1% to 4.0%. We have average earnings excluding bonus um, for, uh, for in the UK, expected to rise from 3.7% to 4.1%. And we also have uh, later on, we have at the so actually, it should be 8.30 Eastern time. Well, the producer price index month on month. That's going to measure a wholesale inflation. And uh, anytime you see the word index, that's their clever word for the word inflation. They both start with the letter I. And index is really measuring inflation, PPI. That's inflation. Or, or, but it's called the producer price index. So it's going to measure inflation. It's expected to fall from 1.0% to 0.8%, and that's uh, kind of substantial. So we'll see that if that happens. If it doesn't, if it comes in higher than expected, we would probably think the dollar would probably rise as this puts pressure on the Fed to curb in inflation pressures by actually raising uh, the interest rate to slow down, to reduce money growth and reduce inflation, okay? Okay. Um, and here is producer price index X food and energy month on month. Now, I don't know who doesn't use food or energy, but they actually have a number that takes food and energy out of the picture. But it, ex it still is expected to fall from 0 0.8 to 0 0.6. However, if you've been to the, to the gas lines recently or the, <laughs> the gas stations recently and are paying four, five, six, and even seven dollars a gallon for gas, I don't think that number is going to be low at all. Okay. But again, it's looking at month on month, it's comparing February, uh, February's number to January's number. And the big rises that we had are actually in March. So next month should be crazy high, okay? This month will be, oh, wow, it's not that bad, but it's backward looking. So I wouldn't put too much, uh, too much uh, credit in that, too much faith in that number. However, all we know is that uh, when I'm looking at uh, the U.S. dollar types of news, or the I'm looking at trading the euro versus the U.S. dollar, okay, to, to, to maximize the volatility from the release of that number, 
usually hits the euro pretty square. Okay, now on Wednesday, March 16th, which is my wife's birthday, happy birthday, honey. Um, we have um, a retail sales month on month. That really should be 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, I guess. It's not adjusted for daylight savings time yet. Uh, but retail sales usually comes in um, as, a, as a big number. And again, I would look at the euro. The euro will be in play on Wednesday. So, And uh, they're looking for it to fall of retail sales from 3.8% to 0.6%. So even the fall was happening even before the invasion. Well, actually, the invasion was like, what, in, end of February? So maybe that's probably an impacting something. Also, warmer weather in some places, um, you know, could impact the purchase of winter wear. <laughs> anyway, uh, also we're gonna have some Canadian data too, which means the Canadian dollar being in place. So dollar CAD, one of my favorite choices to trade, but CAD yen and CAD, uh, CAD Swiss are, could be good and Aussie CAD as well. Looking at consumer prices, uh, they, they don't give a forecast. They'll probably get it wrong anyway if they did. 0.4% was the previous number. We go to the uh, Bank of Canada Consumer Price Index. Again, they're measuring uh, inflation. They're expected, they're also forecasting a fall from 0.8 to 0.6%, okay? And then Consumer Price Index month on month, also released at the same time. You're looking to fall from 0.9% to 0.6%. And uh, if this is so, then uh, the Bank of Canada may not have to raise rates or they might do a pause considering that, uh, you know, there's a war going on and uh, instability and, you know, central banks may, may not, uh, may, may discount these numbers, you know, given that, uh, you know, um, maybe some bigger numbers are coming up next for March. So, but you need to wait to April to see March numbers. But anyway, the Canadian dollar will be in play. And so, you know, we'll look to see what kind of trends at the, uh, they are established and where they want, where the banks want to take the Canadian dollar during this time. Then uh, with FOMC economic projections and the monetary policy statement as well, and everything that I just showed you before may just be a mute, a mute point because sometimes markets will just go flat going into the FOMC, the monetary policy and rate decision, a rate decision. They're widely expected to keep rates unchanged at 0.25%. And, but uh, they haven't telegraphed or said that they're saying, hey, we're gonna raise, we're gonna raise. Will they raise it at this meeting? Um, maybe, and if they do, that could really send the dollar uh, much higher. If they don't, then that could send the dollar lower as it means that the party is gonna be kept alive and the stock market probably rally as well. Cheap money keeps the every keeps the party going. Keep the the music played on, you know, it, it, just like the orchestra played on the Titanic. They kept the music going, but the ship did go down, right? Um, then we have New Zealand data, GDP uh, quarter on quarter, negative three point seven percent forecast, not given. They probably get it wrong anyway. Um, but that's going to be uh, that's going to be kind of early too, you know. That's going to be like about five. To, 5 p.m., 6 p.m. So, you know, and usually get spreads really wide around between five and six. I wouldn't trade any, you know, try to keep your, you know, if you're not in new positions, don't open any around five, 5.30 or so. Like, wait till like later, much later. Um, unemployment rate of Australia will come out at 7.30 or 8.30 or so, 4.2%. Previous number was 4.1%, so we're looking for a tick down. Uh, again, the Australian dollar being in play. So let, we're going to have some really good, uh, a wide selection of pairs to choose from uh, as far as uh, some action going on in them, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, and Super Thursday. Oh, my goodness. Thursday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day, guys. All from Greg McLeod from Irish Mocha to all of you. <laughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day, right? Anyway. Bank of England, someone said, well, Greg, I think that's a Scottish name. It's like, like, don't mess up the narrative. Don't let the facts distort the great story, right? Okay. Anyway, UK, Super Thursday, March 17th. Be there, be square. Bank of England, asset purchase facility, and the interest rate decision from the UK, as well as a monetary policy summary, Bank of England minutes, and, and uh, that's all going to be happening on Thursday. 
Again, it's widely expected from the keep rates unchanged at 0.5%, but a big, a uh, big bang of, of, of economic data coming out of the UK at uh, probably about at, uh, eight, probably 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. So it's going to be the, UK, the the pound will definitely be in serious, serious play. You know, play, play, I mean, and some people will go, well, gee, the, the euro didn't really move this time. Why? Because the pound news is up, right? <laughs> See the flags? We want to trade where the flags are. That's where the most volatility is going to be right in the area. Now, now I, I know long, long ago in a town, in a, in a place far, far away, I used to say, stay away from the news. Now I'm saying, don't fear the news, especially, by the way, especially when you have a predictive indicator can forecast price. Anyway, uh, if you don't have one, stay away from news. Now, also, we've got going on here a bank, the bank of uh, the bank of uh, Japan uh, monetary policy statement, interest rate decision. That's a non-event. They will never ever raise rates. <laughs> They've been negative. They this is like the law. It was a lost decade. And it was a lost two decades. We're working in the lap the lost three decades of zero interest rate policy. Now we're at negative. So no, we passed ZERP. We're in NERP, negative interest rate policy, okay? Not the football, not the NERP thing that you catch, the spongy thing, you know? And they make all kinds of stuff, like bows and arrows and stuff like that, and slingshots. And, yeah, anyway, NERP, N-I-R-P, stands for negative interest rate policy, and they have been negative for a long time, right? And uh, they have a press conference coming up after that, and the yen... Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see if anything ever moves. I don't think, you know, I wouldn't trade it, this announcement, because the Bank of Japan hasn't moved the market like it used to, like since the early 2000s when they used to do the covert, not, not covert, but overt intervention. You know, they'll intervene in the market. Hey, we're going to buy, we're going to sell our currency and make it weak. And you're like, going, really? You're telling us that you're going to do it? Free money, right? That was, but that was long ago. Uh, those are the gold, the golden ages of forex. You know, eight pip spreads on the euro, and you know, nice. Anyway, Canada, re, uh, Canada, Canada, Canada retail sales month on month. Previous number was negative one point eight. I'm sure they might come out a, bit, a little bit. You know, sometimes they have a negative number as a previous number, and they beat it. It's easy to beat. You know, just to you know, buy some maple syrup or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the Canadian dollar will be in play on Friday, so look for that as well. But Super Thursday is going to be the big crown jewel of this week, and you really want to to keep your pound charts up, whether it's pound yen, pound Swiss, pound CAD, pound dollar. Take your pick. Uh, this again, this is not uh, for investment advice or or advisory or anything like that. Seek your professionals for that. I'm just merely saying that what I'm going to be looking at in the weeks, in the coming days ahead. Okay, fair enough. Let's transition to the charts to see what we're going to look at. And I'm going to move my little list over to the side so I'm going to you know, so we can track what I'm going to be looking at. Because I trade the calendar, guys. People go, well, I want to trade the, you know, the Tasmanian whatever. It's like, no, <laughs> I am not going to trade the, the you know, some odd currency, you know, Czechoslovakian or you know, this, maybe Hungarian foreign. If the party is in the Aust Aussie dollar on Monday, that's the first thing I'm going to be looking at. But I'm also going to be looking at my heat map. My heat map is also going to tell me too. The heat map usually lines up with the economic calendar because guess what? Your volume and volatility, the players come in, that's where the party is going to be. You want to be where there's a party, uh, where there is, you know, beverages and chips and music and you don't want to go to currency which is gray and flat like this one okay so that's why we use my market heat map so we can keep us in the green so we can stay in the green and we want to short when it's red and extreme and we want to stay away from the stuff in the middle okay all right so let's get to the chart chartis the chart the charties yeah let's do it yeah, I'm gonna start with the Australian dollar and let's declutter my charts. What is going on here? Remove all. 
drawings and we're all indicators. Okay, we're all drawings. Okay. And I'm going to move this out of the way too. And so I don't want to start that yet. I actually want to start the DXY, the, the, uh, the dollar index. The dollar index is on straight fire, guys. This thing is on the move. And you see higher highs, higher lows, all you structured people out there. This is some serious structure. And, uh, you know, do the dollar is, uh, you know, the is on fire, you know. I, Yes, XRP's got some news. Yeah, crypto's got some news. But as long as the dollar is the reserve currency of the world, which may not be for very long, but it's still commanding. I mean, we're approaching the old 9941 high that we had back in uh, back on the March 7th. And uh, I mean, big candles stacking up. You know, basically we had a, a nice, this is a three candle pattern called a morning star, bullish Japanese candlestick pattern. Some people call it a U, but you know, and it, <laughs> there you go. There's your bullish pattern bouncing off of a trend line, a, a demand line, right? This is our, our, our what we call our demand. Buyers stepped in on the line, price came down, and then buyers bought it on the, and then the, you got a little bit of a wick where buyers or sellers try to push it down and got driven back. And so now we look at some previous levels of resistance and we have, we have to go back in some time to find out what the last time we were here. And we haven't been here since uh, May, 2020. Okay. So we haven't been there in two years. So we're, all, we're going back to you no, know, no, no pandemic, you know, pre pandemic levels, right? Uh, well, actually the, the March 20th was a pandemic. It was two year anniversary. Right. But uh, so we're getting back into, there's a lot of congestion up here. Right. So there's a lot of congestion in this area, in this 100 around number. So I expect for the bears to defend this area. You know, that's a very um, lots of congestion, lots of stuff going on, which could be obstacles for any type of bullish advancement. I mean, since the double bottom back uh, in uh, April of last year, we have soared quite a bit, almost, uh, you know, 10, 10 points, 10 big figures um, since that low that we hit. So now we're hitting some, uh, we broke above the 618 and then we might, there's a 786 Fibonacci at 113. So maybe we get up to that area and there might be enough resistance there to drive this back. So we may, maybe for uh, the next couple of days, rally up to this area of resistance and then we can see price when we break that line. So on bulls versus bears or bears versus bulls, I, you know, um, I am I am short term bullish, but I'm medium term bearish, right? Um, but if we get above the highs of 188, then we could probably shoot into that 102, the 103, the old high of April of 2020. So that this zone of congestion. If it doesn't hold, then uh, we've got to move up, right? So right now, uh, we trade what we see, and we, see, we can see a clear bullish bounce on the trend line, and we can see. So what does this mean? Okay, so Greg, we don't trade dollar. What are you talking about, Greg? Well, let's go to our first currency, which is going to be up on Monday, which is the RBA rate announcement. So we're going to look at, I'm going to look at, uh, I can look at a AUD USD. Or with the FOMC announcement coming up, I might even look at AUDJPY instead. Because uh, people are going to be gaming the U.S. dollar uh, versus the, um, you know, versus the world going into the FOMC announcement. Now, we might rally into the FOMC announcement. And then when we get there, it's a non-event. And that's where the sell-off happens on the dollar. Um, so we might get this rally. So let me get rid of this trend line here. And remove all drawings, and there we go. So we got this is our Aussie yen chart, daily chart, and we can see that we are coming up on some resistance. You know, old old high uh, eighty six oh seven, right? We rallied from a low, but we've been in this range for a really long time. I mean, if you just exclude that long wick, I mean, we've been between seventy. Uh, 
a low of 77.86 to a high of, uh, of around 86.35. So a bit, roughly a 900 pip channel, right? So we're approaching the top of that area. And we see that every time we came close to the area, we start turning around and dropping. And we may not have much juice left in this. So we might get a nice push up, right, into that area, into that zone. Uh, we do have an uptrend, higher highs and higher lows on the daily chart, right? Uh, but that that indecision candle right there, this doji there, giving a little bit of a pause, probably with the meeting going on, you know, I mean, the, you know, the minutes, the RBA minutes, uh, could we could get a, a move higher. And we might be, our, our gains may be capped. Now, this, I call this popping a wheelie where price fails to make a new low. Um, buyers stepped in too kind of early and some, and they're rewarded, but then, you know, sellers usually come in and hit it on the south side. So yeah, 100% expansion is at 86. 02, a typical resistance area uh, where we use an, uh, a Gartley, we call it like a bullish Gartley, a bearish Gartley, A, B equals C, D. You know, what were you talking about, Greg? I, I, this is where, you, you know, you, mentorship helps when you're, you know, when you know, you get taught by someone who's been doing this for a while. That's our bearish Gartley, and that usually foretells of a possible drop, okay? Uh, we could skid a little higher, yeah, we had our reversal candlestick pattern there, and now we have old resistance, uh, bearish currently at 100% expansion. And I would watch it. Yeah, I, I would check out some other Aussie pairs too, right? Like maybe even taking checking out GBP AUD. And we can move all the drawings here. And uh, I mean, we're nice bit of, uh, yeah. See, we're... We're at support, near support, very close. If you exclude the wick, we're very close to a whole number, round number. You know, so we could see this, uh, you know, this has been driving down for a really long time, right? So we could see some type of a, if we see some type of weakness in the Australian dollar, pound Aussie could be a, a, a multi, you know, we're coming at this previous support back here in March of 2021. And we could probably bounce from that area, right? And so that could possibly be a, you know, a bearish move for the uh, Australian, or the pound Aussie, we could see actually bullish for pound Aussie, bearish for Australian dollar. But we could squeak past this and go a little bit lower. You know, there is more support down more, uh, more support down here at the 174, uh, 43 area. So what I do is go through these pound, uh, these uh, Aussie pairs and try to see if there is something that is trading near. Okay, now here's a nice one here. Aussie cat pullback to a nice trend line. We get, get a bounce from that trend line and that could give us some, uh, some pretty good tippage there, right? You know, we could probably draw a fib on that. And 38% um, retracement is at 92.46. We might have a little bit more to go. So short-term bearish, medium-term bullish um, on the, uh, the Aussie, Aussie CAD. Okay. Now, and, he, and we also, we, you know, we're going to go, we're not going to trade off a daily chart. We're probably going down the one-hour chart and look at something like that, where mm, that even looks more tasty. If we come down to that trend line, and come back to this old high, we are looking looking good, right? All right. So stay tuned. If you come, if you uh, join me uh, for the, you come to the forex cash machine, and you actually can come to. Uh, <clears throat> let me put it up here too. Go https colon forward slash forward slash www dot the Forex spelled correctly, Forex Cash Machine.com. Right. So you can go there. And if you come here, it will you can access my my Facebook group. Okay. My uh, so make sure you answer the questions though, you know. That way I know you're not a robot. I you're not a robot. 
um, pre pre scalping VIP Facebook group, right? But you gotta answer the questions. If you don't answer the questions, or if you don't have a profile picture, don't even bother because I'm going. <clears throat> you're gonna be denied access. I'm trying to keep this, keep all the scammers and the robots and you know the Autobots. You know, I want just human beings who want to learn how to trade. All right, no self, -pro no self promotion. If you got your own little thing going on, you don't need to come near me. Okay, all right, just do your thing. Get your own audience. <laughs> All right, moving right along. All right, uh, it's annoying. It's really annoying. You, you, you know, you, people. You, you know, you work really hard to uh, give good value, and some people want to ride your coattails. I find it quite irritating. Anyway, keep going, Greg. Okay, keep it positive. Let's go to GBP, GBP USD, or JPY. I'm gonna go here and boy, boy, was this was this a call or what? I said, we're gonna rally off the lows, hit old resistance or old support. Old support becomes new resistance. And then bam. Yeah, so I'm, that was bulls versus bears last week. If you missed it, you really shouldn't. Okay, anyway. So here we are, we're extended, you know, old uh, Ralph uh, Nelson Elliott called that ending diagonal. And, um, you know, but uh, let's see. We have been in a power dive, right? Power dive since the beginning of um, the end of, uh, of February, right? And we uh, we just broke below the thirty eight percent retracement on the uh, on the pound versus U.S. dollar on the daily, and it looks like it's breaking out of a four day consolidation, which is very very bearish, right? Um, so there's so many bearish things here, and and, the, and it did it kind of a, at a late, uh, you know, kind of late in the week for that break. So sometimes what happens is we get a well, you know, like somebody will return to the scene of the crime, RTTSC, where price returns back to the breakout point, and this actually could snap back, you know, pretty pretty big, right? Um, but you know, if this trend does continue, and sometimes they do. Uh, I know we can come back and test this where there's a lot of congestion here. There's a lot of congestion back in uh, from the, you know, from September 2020, then actually back even farther, you know, September 20, yeah, 2020 up to about November. Whole lot of, a um, whole lot of congestion that you can project over here, which could be a, a magnet for price, which could, you know, foretell a possible bounce higher, right? Um, so uh, I bulls versus bears. I am short term bearish, uh, but again, we can go down to smaller time frames and probably find some type of a re a rebound that tests this this breakout point or so. And the support comes in at one thirty one sixty one, and we're currently around one thirty twenty five. So a move of about. Uh, 40 something tips or so to the upside could be capped by all this by this Fibonacci line here. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, we're going to look at the euro, the euro, because we're going to have that uh, producer price index and a number of other US. Remember, when we're trading for me, that's what I look at. Okay. You may look at something else, but what I look at when I'm trading news off the, well, in the US economy, I look at the euro. Because the euro is considered the anti-dollar, okay? So it's going to be very sensitive to U.S. news. Why is that? Then that, you know they created this thing in 1999, and uh, to, uh, to to basically be in the offset of uh, the offset of the you know do the opposite of what the dollar is doing to give people a place to put money in case something went wrong in Europe, they can run to the dollar. If something went wrong in the U.S., then they can run to the euro. So provides a big place to hold, a big basket to hold people, hold money, okay? So here's a euro and it does not look very uh, happy. <laughs> it may, it's making a sad face, the sad face pattern. Okay, I'm gonna, I just create a new pattern. It's, it's really a, no, a, an evening star, but <laughs> I call it the sad face pattern. 
So that's a frown. It's going down. Uh, there's support coming in though, so that frown may get, yeah. So, so we had a little smile and then it turned into a frown, right? And that was that was the ECB rate announcement that uh, spiked up and kept dropping. My goodness, look at 108.04. It's possible for this to go go down, continue to move. Bulls versus bears. I am bullish. I'm sorry, bearish. I'm sorry, bearish to about the about to the support area. FOMC comes up, we could see this rebound in the middle of the week. You know, as we have this actually supply should be red, supply and demand, sellers, my sell trend line. Okay, we got the sell, and now we're looking for a price to continue to move. But if that line gets triggered, then we are going to be in it to win it to the north side. But we are falling. Catch me, I'm falling. Do, 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 do. Catch me now, I'm falling, falling in love. Okay. <laughs> Don't catch a falling knife. <laughs> so here we go. There is the uh, 106.36, my goodness. Hey, parity's down here, baby, right here. That 100, I haven't been there since 1999. 1000, party's over, parity's in sight. <laughs> We're going to party like it's 1999. Yeah. Oh, I don't even have data back that far. Right? That kind of sucks. I was gonna go back there, right? Yeah, they they when the euro came out, it was like eighty five for a long time, and the, when it went to parity, they're like, "Oh, we're parity of U.S. dollars." Like, yeah, now all your goods are expensive, and now your export economy is sucking wind. Don't you love a strong currency? Okay, so. Uh, let's go ahead and move on with the Canadian dollar. I'm going a little long because um, we got a lot of currencies to cover, but I'm going to go USDCAD is my preferred way of trading. A lot of those drawings from mentorship, a lot of pretty complicated stuff. <laughs> but here we go. And we've just been stuck in a really big range. I mean, if you take that, you know, I mean, you especially draw a bubble mix, but there is this band that we're in, um, you know, this just drop, this band up, you know, then with another low down at the in the May area, May of 2021. And you know, we're, we're kind of stepping up, stepping up, right? Um, and then we've been in this kind of uptrend. It's been, you know, because it's following the dollar, right? The US dollar. And it's our demand line, make that green. That's, every time it hits there, buyers step in. And then they accelerated. We got this line where prices just didn't come back down, right? But we do have a trend line here that has not been touched. Oh, uh, we got one touch, two touches. We need a third touch, and that would take us down like one twenty six fifty three. If we can get a touch there, it would be bullish because sometimes prices got to back up a little bit. You know, back up, back up, but they like break the door down and go the other way. Look at those old cartoons, and they um. Uh, the battering ram, battering ram, we might see something like that. So um, a touchdown in the one, one spot, two, six, three, three to five, zero area. We get a pullback down there. Look for, the re I'm going to be reloading my longs to forward to take this back up, to take out, at least retest the high. And that's going to be good for a goodly amount of pips from uh, 2660 to uh, 29, like 300, 270 pips or so. Okay. So, uh, and, the, so and the Canadian dollar is going to be in play with the US dollar. We're going to have the Euro, uh, um, New Zealand dollar has, uh, New Zealand has the GDP announcement, but it's going to be like, you know, like in the daytime. You know, it's going to be really early, but it could move afterwards. There's going to be momentum after that. Oh, okay. We're all drawing that. Let's go with that. Okay, let's go. Okay. I'm expecting it to drop. So you got just on my trade. Um, I'm trading large, holding that, waiting for this to like come down. All right. 
because we've got this long wick candle we've got a shooting star we've got old resistance right there all right about here right so we're looking for a price to come on down like bob barker and um you know if this area holds 68 89 holds you know and we come back and test the trend line we could be short-term bearish there's a lot of bullish activity i mean he said oh those bearish greg yeah, but there's like symmetry. When you have like candles like falling, 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 like in long progression like that, there's usually some type of what we call symmetry on the other side of the, you know, bullish symmetry on the other side, All right? So we might get a pullback, short-term bearish and medium-term bullish, right? Um, and we, we've got all kinds of bearish trend lines coming in here. But you know, it said the the gains will be capped somewhere around that trend line, right? But we might come exactly to where that old peak is seventy two eleven, and we're at sixty eight oh sixty eight oh three. So yeah, we might be getting ahead of ourselves. But I look for a short term bearish, medium term pullback, Kiwi dollar, and then uh, let's look at the Australian dollar. I think we did that already. Let's go ahead. Uh, we did GDP. And uh, we can just take a look at the yen index, and that's JXY. Jap you know, that's the, this is a basket of currencies versus the Japanese yen. You can see the Japanese yen actually has been weakening, weakening seriously, right? And uh, making lower, this is a basket, uh, the currency index. And they usually, it's, move all drawings, okay. You know, it's, they usually are trying to weaken their currency, but you know, what's coming up is the end of the Japanese fiscal year. Japanese fiscal year ends March 31st. And that, you know, no, most companies and countries, fiscal year ends in December. But after World War II, the United States to help Japan out so they could benefit from all the sales and things during Christmas time, adjusted their, their, um, their, yeah, they're, they're, they're year end, their fiscal year end. So this usually means we have a, a migration of yen back to Japan. They call it yen repatriation flows. And so that usually happens around the, you know, the end of March. So we've been in this really big bearish downtrend here, right? And so, you know, at some point in time, where you're going to see some repatriation flows, and that's going to cause all your yen pairs, Aussie yen, pound yen, Swiss yen, euro yen, all of them to short-term reverse direction, as different, you know, different um, subsidiaries and different countries repatriate those yen back to Japan, put them on the books, and then redeploy the cheap capital all over again. So it follows this process. And you can go through the calendar, you look at, you know, the different, uh, the, the, there's one here in March where you spiked up, right, for repatriation, and then it spiked back down. And so, I mean, you'll, you'll see, like, aberrations or weird moves in that, in that uh, April or May, or late March, early April time, time period, right? So I find another one. Here's a little one, not so big, a little hop. Little hop and then drop and then big hop after that. So this is really uh, extreme drop, and we have a gap too. There's a big gap, and usually price comes up and tests fills. See how gap the price gapped here, and price came to fill the gap. So we have a big gap in price. So we might see a fill of the gap. And what that would mean uh, is that we would see pairs like pound yen, Aussie yen, Swiss yen, Euro yen, all of them start to fall sharply to fill this gap okay so that's something and it might be triggered by the um you know the bank of japan rate decision okay so you might actually see some life come out of there okay okay well that's going to be it for me i want to thank you so much for being a part of this group and um we're going to get started uh on uh come to you no know, come to our group the, the forex cash machine group and um, you'll be able to watch, you know, the, the, our live stream, participate in the conversation, uh, get involved in the conversation. We're a dynamic group, exchanging ideas, uh, you know, 
We're not, uh, you know, we're not marketing anything. We're just giving you good content and showing you of results that we get using the Pip and Run and Forex Cash Machine systems. And if you would like to work with me on a more one-on-one -on -one basis or, or on a group basis, uh, then you'll have an opportunity at the end of this video to apply to the Elite Traders University or, and, and to, um, to actually learn more about what we do through our webinars and through our teaching and coaching. We're learning a, edu uh, a learning organization dedicated to helping to create professional, profitable traders. Again, my name is Greg McLeod. Peace and pips. Take care. Bye-bye. If you felt a spark here and want to see how these principles can be used in your own trading, go to www.elitetradersuniversity.com forward slash apply to book a free session with our team. We have helped hundreds of people remove the frustration and obstacles in trading to become consistent, highly profitable traders. These are proven principles that just work. Happy pipping!